It's important to plan out your website and each web page before you start coding in HTML or CSS. We started this planning last week with the site plan. Part of the site plan was the wireframe of the home page. Wireframing plays an important role in your design process. Wireframes will depict what the web page will look like or the interface of our page. They can be something like this that is handwritten or they can also be created using different tools like we saw with this one that they don't really um, portray the different colors per se or the actual images of the page. It's just a visual representation of the page. Too many images or colors might distract from focusing on the layout. At this point we're just interested in the basic structure of the page and which elements we'll be using to create the page. We'll be creating a wireframe later in the course. This week we're looking at completed wireframes. If I were building a website for a client I would I wouldn't want to spend a lot of hours coding out all of my HTML and CSS to then show the client for the first time. I would create a wireframe like this to present to them to get feedback. At this point, if they wanted changes, that would be simpler to change than if I had coded it all. So not only is wireframing a good design practice, it saves a lot of time in the long run with your development process. With a wireframe showing the design of our page, we're ready to start converting that wireframe into HTML. But let's take a look at this wireframe and decide how our page elements might be grouped. We can see that the top of the page is the logo and navigation. So I'm going to group this area. So this is the navigation and the logo area. It's followed by a scrolling banner with text over the banner and images, a product gallery, and then a footer with contact information and copyright information, sitemap, and social media icons. These two parts of the page will remain the same for every page on our website. As the users of our site go from page to page in the site, the top portion of the page, the navigation and logo, and the bottom portion, the footer, will stay the same. So these are going to logically go in their own groups. Everything else on the page between the navigation and footer will most likely change from page to page. So we're going to also group that section together as well. Okay, within that part, if we look at this wireframe, we can see a few more groupings. Notice, notice the banner scrolling area here has a different purpose from the product gallery that is here. They not only have different functions, but they will also be designed or laid out differently as well. So I'm going to group those together as well. One group for the banner image here and one grouping for the product gallery here. So for example, each banner image also might have some text that goes with each image. So we see some text here on top of the image. For design purposes, we might also want to group each of the images and the text for each of the banner displays together. Also notice that each of the products also have a headline and a description or a title of the product with them as well. So we can also group those together within the product gallery if we know later that we'll be doing some CSS the same on all of them. So we can see that the groupings can nest inside of each other as we study the wireframes. This will correspond with how our HTML might be nested inside each other as we create the HTML elements. Let's look at the wireframe for the home page of the whitewater rafting site. Again, we can see some logic logical groupings here. Header section here. And of course a footer. And these two areas won't change from page to page. In between that, we have the main section that will change from page to page. And at the top here, we have a hero or banner section. 
and you'll see it kind of goes up behind the menu, but I'll group it right here for now. Other pages, it won't go up behind the menu. And we also have this area here that has three images with some icons and text, and an area here with an image and a message area here. Again, within these groups, we have three of very similar groupings here with an image, an icon, and some text that we might group together. And maybe inside this one, we might group this headline, paragraph, and button together as well. So you might you can see how the groups are nested in each inside of other groups. And when we get to the HTML structure that we start typing out, we're going to see how the elements and class attributes are used to group them all properly.